moving and positioning. So yeah. uh, we're heading into that slide over here now with 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 some key position starting positions of, of the points. And yeah. earlier you said as well how you know you know how that point begins is so crucial and important. So if you don't mind, um, just share a little bit with us on on you know what does each of these positions mean to you and and, and sort of what are some key things or key words that you used to get the points started right off, uh, well off um, when you were competing. Yeah, I mean, uh, for me as a server, uh, I generally like standing in a singles position a little bit more because, uh, you know, I, I had a good sense for the wide serves on both sides, which, um, you know, maybe in doubles aren't always the best serves to be trying too often because you're opening up the court a little bit, uh, you know, with, with your partner moving towards the serve, mm -hmm. you know, that generally opens up a little more space for the returner if they're able to get to the return. Generally, if you're setting up your partner, uh, in a doubles match, you're, you're hitting body serves or T serves, right? And uh, so I, I would stand um, more close to the T on both sides, uh, also because I felt like the quality of my T serve would, would improve by, by being in that position. Uh, and then again, I, you mentioned what kind of keywords, keywords, uh, um, Urush and I talked about, uh, you know, the, the mental aspect of, of tennis, and I really took that seriously. And especially my latter years, mid twenties and on. And, uh, you know, it's something that, uh, I really decided to, to keep a journal and write down a lot of things and, and, uh, you know, keywords were important to me to, to, to really stay focused in, in the moment and, and focus on, you know, things I could control rather than, you know, winning or losing each point or, or worrying about what happened each point. Uh, it's so for, for the serve, my keywords were basically, uh, keeping the toss close, exploding up with my legs and chest. I feel like, you know, if, if you're going up towards the ball, going after the ball, that, that really helps the quality of your serve. And then snapping my wrist is important to, to have that spin on the serve. So, so those were things I was thinking about on serve as a returner. Um, I, you know, depend, depending on your opponent, I mean, some opponents try to hit through you with, with speed and, and, you know, generally in that situation, you're taking a step back, letting the ball come to you and, and, uh, and you know, just trying to make good contact. And and mm -hmm. uh, if if they're more of a an accurate type server, they're they're painting the lines or going for the lines a little bit more. It's generally better to to stand in a little bit because you're cutting off those angles. Uh, kick serve, same type of thing. You want to take those early. You don't want to let those get up too high because uh, then it becomes a real challenge above your shoulder, way above your shoulder. Um, but then again, I mean, the the slider serves the one with a little more spin. If uh, if they're very capable of. of handcuffing you serving to your body which i was a little bit weak at uh you know dealing with i would take uh i would rather even if it came slow i'd rather uh, be able to take a good swing at it and, and take a step back and get out of the way of that ball and uh and really make good contact and then the keywords for for returning for me were was definitely letting it come into my power zone i mean this is something that uh that people at all levels need to understand for every stroke i mean just think of it like uh you know, baseball or, or hockey or, or a sport where you, you, you know, if you're hitting a home run, you're hitting the ball in, you know, in front of you in your comfort zone, right? So it's the same thing with every stroke. I mean, when you're serving, you're hitting it out in front of you in the same, you know, release point as, as when you're throwing. That's very important. Uh, when you're, when you're hitting a forehand, again, it's out in front of you in, in, your, in your, you know, proper impact point backhand, same thing, volley, same thing. I mean, a lot of times people are chasing balls way out in front of them. And, mm -hmm. and to hit, hit the ball clean and to have, you know, optimal power, if you're, if you're relaxed and let the ball come into your power zone, this is where you get, uh, you know, the best quality. So it's, you know, it comes from repetition. Obviously this is a uh, tennis is a re repetition sport and a lot allowing the ball to come into your, to your impact uh, zone, proper impact zone is very key. So as a returner, you're, uh, you're letting the ball come to your, your, uh, that zone. Um, you're, you're, you have to have good balance as you step out to the ball because often you're stretching. So that step out is very important. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times people will plant their feet too early and they'll be reaching for the ball, uh, which, which is uh, obviously not, not ideal. Uh, keeping your eye on the ball is, is key. When uh, a lot of the time when I would struggle on my returns, I'd be looking at my target before mm -hmm. I even made contact, which, is, which can be a challenge. And then understanding that... Uh, you know, while it is a similar type stroke with, with a forehand backhand, a return is a little bit different because, uh, you know, the ball is generally coming a little bit faster off the serve. So keeping a, a compact, uh, 
uh, take back is key, mm -hmm. but a good, but a good finish is, is very important. So you're finishing like a, like a baseline shot, but you're, you're definitely not swinging like a baseline shot. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, service partner, this is, you know, what I can translate most to, to club level doubles and where, you know, the, they, the players there get into trouble. I see a lot of, uh, you know, the wrong positioning when, when your server, when you're the partner of the server, ideally for me, and I think this applies to, to all levels, you need to be in the middle of the box. So you're, you're prepared to, to move forward. You have enough space to move forward. You have enough space to, to, you know, go back a little bit in case uh, the lob uh, is put up. You're, you're not overprotective of the alley, which I think is, is something that I noticed that club players do way too much. They're very protective of the alley. And, and, you know, I, I, I watched, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, much more in the club scene now. And I, you know, I see what's going on. I and mean, it's very rare, first of all, that the club players are even hitting the ball down the line. Generally, they're going back cross court and, and uh, right. you know, just playing traditional doubles. And so even for that reason, I, I, I don't understand why uh, people are overprotective of the alley. So, I mean, you have a responsibility at the net as a service partner to cover a certain area. I mean, you know, the, the if, you, if your partner's coming in a certain volume and, and uh, that middle ball, you know, they shouldn't be hitting, you know, as a righty on the on the deuce side, they shouldn't be hitting a backhand volley when they're coming in, right, yes. on the deuce side. So, mm -hmm. you know, once they establish position uh, at the net, then you know that cross court ball is is there. They should be hitting backhand volleys. But on the first one, it's it's the the partner's responsibility to you know to to cover those, and as well as you know, uh, also. You know they they have to be ready for their backhand volley, so that's that would be their forehand volley and as well as their their backhand volley, and that comes a lot from having your shoulders square. I think uh, right gen generally a lot of players tend to turn their shoulders, anticipating something is going to happen before it actually happens, which is the most dangerous thing you can do in doubles because you're taking yourself out of the play. So keeping your shoulders square to to your opponent as they're about to hit towards you is is very important. So you're following your partner's serve. You know, if they're serving wide, mm -hmm. you're following in a diagonal. You know, you're, and, and you're not in the alley. You're still, you're, yeah, you're, you're following, right. following the ball wide. It's still in the in the box. We'll get to that one. Box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then again, you're following a T in a diagonal if, if they're serving T. So this comes back to strategizing with your with your partner, knowing where he's going to serve, and then uh, and then adjusting your feet. You know, going forward first always, and then diagonal out if you're if you're wanting to be aggressive and, and intercept the, the ball. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, as a, as a returner's partner, you're going to stand back a little bit. Uh, you know, at the pro level, you know, you're generally not too worried about reflexing. You know, if if your opponent at the net is trying to intercept your your partner's return, you're generally not going to reflex too many of those, and and you know, bank on on winning a point that way. So your your job is more to put pressure on the server coming in, hitting a first volley, or if he stays back, hitting a shot off, putting pressure off their first shot from the baseline and hoping that your your partner is able to get the return past the net player, right? Yes. So as the, as, the, um, as the returner, you're starting a little bit further back, but you are um, you are ready to, to move forward. And, and at the club level, I think it's a little bit different because, uh, you know, the net player on the server side, you know, might not always be capable of, of putting away that volley and you're giving yourself a little more space to reflex those shots. And, uh, you know, that's, that's an important strategy. And, you know, the best volleyers at any level are the ones that are trying to make the reflex volley rather than, you know, trying to protect themselves and make the reflex volley, you know? So you have to have that mentality that almost like a goalie in hockey that your, your, your hands are ready, your hands are out in front and you're going to reflex anything. And, you know, if, you, if your partner hits a decent return, even if the, the net player is being aggressive at the net, you know, chances are you're going to have a play on that ball. So by, by standing a little further back at the club level, I think you're going to, you're going to allow yourself to stay in the point. And then, yeah, uh, yeah just That's a few it. words again. I mean, um, and they don't really apply to the positioning uh, as much, but yeah, just knowing where your position, where you're positioning, always know where you're on the court. I mean, when the, when you're a server's returner, when you're sorry, when you're a server's partner or returner and they engage in that cross court rally, this is something that's obviously very popular in, in club doubles and now more so in professional doubles than ever before, uh, because guys are serving and staying back and you'll see a lot more cross court rallies than you ever have in, in professional mm -hmm. doubles. 
So the, the responsibility of the net player is to be moving forward as your opponent's hitting. So you're able to, you know, cut off as, if you're moving forward and then diagonally, diagonally to the ball, you're able to cut off much more space. It's much more efficient movement than anticipating, oh, I'm going to go here and just dart sideways to the ball. First of mm -hmm. all, if you, dart, if you just completely go sideways to the ball, you're too far from the net to do anything with the shot. So if you move forward and, and, you, and then a little bit diagonal to the ball, you're, you're in a good position at the net to put the ball away, put the stick of volley, that kind of thing. So that's, uh, that's the mentality. And, and, and again, efficient footwork is, is a meter forward to, to when your opponent's about to hit the ball and then a meter back. So you're basically going back and forth in the box, not side to side. And you know, you're going a meter back as your opponent's shot has, has passed you at the net, then you're kind of preparing for, for your opponent at the net to cross and, you know, maybe to have to reflex that ball once they've engaged in the, mm -hmm. in the cross court rally. I, I like that analogy that you use for the, for the hockey players and, and the, the reflexes that they use. Um, yeah. It's a really good analogy for people. Yeah.